Deluxe. It was rather like a, a love affair. And uh, it, it was a bit like an act of love the whole way through until almost at the end when the love went out of it and it became a bit of an act, to be honest. So um, I just felt it was a, too much of a, a sham. Being tied down to kind of somebody else's style means that you, you really can only develop within a certain circle. Without other people around, you can, you've got the freedom to pick and choose musicians and, and to experiment a little bit more. It's the time for giving In the two-star hotel where breakfast is bad It's just the price of a smile It gets a little bit easier at the moment in, to, in, in terms of varied things that one can do within the pop music business, although there was a time when it was very narrow. It's not the ideal outlet, but it does help me finance things that just are on the fringe of pop music. in inverted commas, you know, there's no soundproofing, there's no electricity up there. In fact, I have to run the mains up from the kitchen downstairs, and in the winter there's no heating, so I have to play with an overcoat on and gloves. <laughs> but I would like to eventually to have enough equipment there to be able to master a mainstream kind of album. People demand a little bit more polish when they go out and buy their pop records. easy to switch roles from musician and performer to producer? It can be tricky. It's always very frustrating watching uh, another group or musician work and uh, I tend to get involved on the musical side with most of the people I've worked with. Uh, it's almost like a kind of an Alfred Hitchcock appearance in one of his movies where he's always in there somewhere at one point and even if it's just banging a tambourine on a track, you know, I, I tend to creep in there at some stage. Was your own record label, Cocteau, originally started as a freer artistic outlet for you or to help new groups release their work? Well, it was started as, as a, it really was an act of desperation. And during the period, I didn't have a major contract. And I bought back from EMI a couple of songs that I'd recorded for the Quit Dreaming album, uh, one of which was, Quit, uh, was uh, De Dreaming Colour. And uh, decided to, to start a label and release that as a little showcase for the things I'd done but weren't getting released. So uh, we put that out and it was reasonably successful for a first time independent release. Um, and then after that the label really sort of started becoming much more of a showcase for other people. You've recorded three instrumental albums. Can you tell me how each one came about? Well the Ritual Echo album was never really intended for public consumption. Uh, during the point of time when I had no major record contracts in between EMI and Phonogram. Um, I was earning my living really by doing production work and whilst I was at home working with a four track and trying out a few kind of experimental things and that became Sounding the Ritual Echo. That was heard by a theatre company called the Yorkshire Actors Company 
and they then approached me to do a soundtrack for a play they were doing based on the German Expressionist movie, The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari, and the play was performed with the music live. And after that, they uh, tackled another uh, film, um, but this time a cocktail movie, um, called Beauty and the Beast. And I was much more familiar with that, I suppose, than Caligari, because I had a print of it myself and so on, and various books about the making of the film. And they were sticking very rigidly to Cocteau's script. La Most musicians' heroes tend to be other musicians. How come yours is the French poet Jean Cocteau? It started a long time ago when I was at college, at our college, and I discovered a, a book of his screenplays. And it was the images from the films that first of all attracted me, and as I found out more about him, I discovered then he was also a poet and uh, had written books and painted and drew and made ceramics and theatre design, and virtually every facet of the arts that he worked in. He just seems to say things that I find I can agree with totally, or sympathise with, or feel, uh, and yet that I could never articulate in that way. I think Cocteau referred to poetry as not so much words on paper that have rhythm and rhyme, but as a quality that can be found in things that, uh, anything really, I mean the way a person walks can be poetic. So I, I never consciously sit down and worry about that, but hopefully there is that quality in some of the things that I do.